What is up, JL Life Model here? I finally got re-geared. We're gonna be talking about the break-in process. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> I went with Revolution Gears 513 in size, and I've been in the process of the break-in. The break-in is the worst part of getting re-geared because it's very time consuming. Make sure you check with other individual manufacturers on what the break-in process is for your gears. I'm gonna be talking about my gears. Though I'm sure other companies may vary slightly, the concept will remain universal amongst gears. Now I'm sure that you're gonna have some people out there who are gonna say, no, 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 that's not how you do it. Finally, you saved up, you buy gears, you pay a fortune to have someone install them for you, and you get in your Jeep and you're ready to go, right? No. Break-in process. You need to break your gears in. The initial break-in is relatively simple. You go between 15 and 20 minutes driving lightly. You stop. You let your diffs cool all the way down. So how do you know if your diff is cooled all the way down? Pretty simple. Just get under and feel it. You want it to be cold to the touch. After getting the first one done, you do it again. <sighs> and again. <sighs> Doing the re-gear actually took me 17 hours to complete, so it's going to take time. It sucks, but it's, it's important. It is also important during the first 100 miles, do not exceed 45 miles an hour. So once you've hit that first 100 miles, you can step things up and start going a little bit faster. Uh, Revolution does not recommend going over 65. I kept it under 60 the entire time. And you can drive longer periods, but you don't want to go overboard with it. You're just doing regular city driving. You're totally fine. Just stop and go. Every time you're stopping, you're obviously giving time for your diff to cool down. If you're going freeway, well, make sure you're pulling off probably every... 20 minutes to let things cool down probably get things done a lot quicker going in city driving after your 500 miles is done you can go and change the oil in both of your diffs and that's the point of the process i am at now so after you get your 500 miles done we need to change the oil inside the diff both front and rear now the bolts going around it are a size 10 uh, make sure you have a drain pan underneath because you will make a mess there is a drain plug on the JLs. However, you need to inspect the gears uh, to make sure everything is okay. We're just gonna be taking off the, the front. And for the ones that drill don't reach, gotta go use a hand tool. After removing all the bolts, you can take off the face plate. Careful, try not to damage your gasket. You may be able to reuse. Just real quick, it is normal if you find metal shavings inside of your diff when you're draining the oil upon the initial break-in. But what's important is you wanna be looking for even wear on the teeth of your, of your ring gear. We need to rotate this, and the best way to do that is to throw it into neutral and jack up the front. But before we get to that point, we're gonna finish cleaning this out. I'm gonna spray some brake cleaner down here. And the purpose of this is to make sure you get all the little metal shavings out of it and just make sure you start with a nice clean differential. I'm gonna cut away, I'm gonna finish cleaning this out. After getting it sprayed out with brake cleaner, uh, just do your best to get a, a shop rag in there and try to clean it out the best you can. Want to make sure the mating surface for the diff plate is clean. Otherwise, you won't have a good seal. Make sure you don't leave behind no pieces of rag. So after you get it cleaned out, underneath, right there, is a drain plug. You will want to remove it. Do that with a the drive of a 3 8 ratchet. <clears throat> so the reason I want to take this out is because there is a magnet on it and it collects little metal shavings. Don't want to leave them in there. And removing this is the easiest way to get the shavings out. Let's get a close up of this. And you see all that buildup on the 
on the rim. That's all metal shavings. The reason this little magnet is in there is to just make sure those little metal shavings ain't getting in between your gears. That they settle, the magnet grabs them, and they stay put until you change your oil. I'm not going to lie, it's not very easy cleaning little metal shavings off of a magnet. Just do the best you can. So, that's what we're going to work with. We can put this back in. Super tight, but get it a good snug. It should sit recessed under the lip so rocks don't hit it. Uh, the next thing we want to do is inspect our gasket. It's actually rubber, and I was expecting paper. But as long as your, bas your gasket isn't full of tears and just in really bad shape, you can get away with reusing. Uh, we will be able to do that with mine. The next step, you're going to just jack up one tire just so you can spin it. And we're going to take this opportunity to inspect the gears. We're looking for even, even wear, chipping, anything that would be an indicator that something ain't right. And this looks really good. Now we're at the stage where we can put our diff cover back on. Now the stock one, I'm not going to lie, is really thin. Though this helps keep the diff cooler. I don't like how thin it is because of the type of stuff I do in my Jeep where I bouncing off rocks. We're going to have a fix for that. So what I got here is the Cafab uh, diff plate. I've had this for a few months waiting for my rear gear to put this on because, you know, I always have to remove the diff plate. But I mean, just look at the thickness. I'll show you the thickness difference between the two is just huge. This will guarantee stand up to a lot more abuse if I hit it. The diff is one of those things I don't go around intentionally smashing around on things, but this is going to be extra protection insurance to ensure that I don't do it because, again, breaking a ring or a pinion is a bigger headache than I want to deal with. And so this diff plate actually comes with new hardware, both bolts and locking washers to help keep it in place. Let's go get it on. So before we put on the gasket, make sure you give it a... A little bit of a cleanup. Make sure there's no dirt, metal shavings stuck to it. I'm gonna make sure the insides are clean. A little bit of rubbing alcohol on the metal, and I'm going to rub it till it's dry. And these do come bare steel. I painted them with engine primer, and of course, I taped off the red. All right, and yeah, you can see how dirty it was. We are going to get our gasket, line it up. Pull the bolt in to help hold the gasket on and carefully get it into place. Put the bolts in. Uh, make sure you use the lock washers so they don't fall out. Uh, after you get it all bolted on, we can proceed putting in oil. It's an Allen key head. Obviously, your 3 8 drive isn't going to pull that out. Uh, you will actually need an Allen key head. Size 14. Uh, you can pull this out. And we can fill that up with oil. So Jeep specifications calls for 7585. I'm going to add in the fluid. I'm going to run it for another thousand miles and I'm going to change the fluid again. Um, by that time, I'm actually going to be switching to a higher weight in oil. But until then, it should just take two quarts. So here's what I'm going to use for the second part of my break in. Uh, these are actually what I prefer. Uh, you can get the big jugs, which are cheaper to how much weight you get but they're a pain in the butt to get in. If you do decide to, decide to go that way with a big jug of gear oil, at least get one of these and just refill this to put into your, your diff. These make it so much freaking easier to fill up. And actually, if you look, uh, you can see the oil is just right there. So I'm good with two quarts. Plug back in. Wipe up whatever oil you spilt. Check for leaks. I'm not going to show you all the process of the rear. The only thing I'm going to show you is where the drain plug is at. The drain plug's not on the bottom. It's actually here on the side. Just a few things before I do do this side. One, the rear is a lot easier because you can access all the diff bolts really quickly and easily. There's no steering or track bar in the way. 
to slow you down. The next thing is when you jack up one side, make sure your parking brake is off um, and you're in neutral. So let's kind of talk into why do you need to do a gear break in? So when the gears come from the factory, Revolution gear and axles say they already lap them from the factory. However, it's still important to do this. And what it does is when you got your ring and your pinion kind of working together and turn your axle, it helps smooth out all the imperfections that are on your ring and pinion from factory. It also helps harden them with heat treatment and it just helps prolong the life of your gears because if you don't do this correctly you're risking prematurely breaking your gears and this is actually one of the last things you want to break inside your axle so it's not an easy fix because if you break one i mean you, you break off teeth of your ring or teeth of your pinion you got to replace both because they're paired together and you can't sub in new parts without proper you, you just can't you have to replace both i paid someone to do my gears it's not that i wasn't prepared to do them myself i had actually just finished practicing on a friend's jeep on a jk and i'm not gonna lie it took us like four days to do and i really wasn't wanting to do that with bromance and take another four it was a very stressful time if i'm re-gearing i don't want to be stuck having to get it done because you know I, I i don't need my jeep but i need my jeep i would at least like to have the j10 moving again before i tackle a large project like that on the jls where i can still go and drive and get things and just make my life easier i went with 513s after driving on the 513s on road they feel great it feels like it's the stock 410s on 35 33 inch tires again it handles really well. Off-road has made a huge difference and it's, you just gain back so much of that lower end torque. Let me kind of give you an example. So here's a graph to kind of try to put it into perspective on how this works and to do the red as the 410s on the 38s. So as the difficulty of the rock increased with the 410s on such a big tire my rpms would need to get higher in order to generate the torque to move the tire to get it over the rock so it would look something like this with the 410s to get over it's, it's exaggerated i know i'm just trying to give a visual stimulus here now switching to 513s what that allows me to do is get over the same obstacles without having to crank up my RPM so much. The steeper you go with your, your gearing, again, continues just to generate less RPMs to get over a set obstacle. And the lower your RPMs are, the less stress you're putting on all the other parts in your drivetrain to include inside the axles. As, as you start cranking those RPMs up, that's when things start to break. Not saying you can't break things when you're at a low RPM, but the higher your RPMs are getting, it just increases the likeliness of it. Now, yes, I went with 513s and they're they're great on-road. He made a freaking huge difference off-road. But I'll be honest with you, I kind of wish I had gone a little steeper. I think there's a 538 gear set. I kind of wish I'd went with that one, but I don't really intend on going anything bigger than a 38 with these current axles, but you never know what time brings you. Maybe I just basically just do something stupid and I'm wanting to break it to give me an excuse. I, I don't know. So as far as the install for gears, they're not difficult to do. They're just extremely tedious and things have to be very exact. So if you don't know what you're doing with gears, take them to a reputable four x four shop because if you, if you do it wrong and things are just a little bit off, you know, you might be able to move and things might sound fine to begin with. You can get grenade your diff and just be in a really crappy spot. And you're going to have a, a very expensive bill to go with that. So next time I re-gear one of the JLs, I'm going to do it myself. There's a lot of special tools that are needed. I'm going to be working on ascertaining those. So when it is time to do the re-gear, it will make things easier for me. Again, I can't stress the importance of the break-in period. If you don't break your gears in properly, you're going to have a bad time. It's just 
Science. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for the next one. Y'all, keep it easy.